Have you ever thought about how to write copy that match your visuals to perfectly align with your audience? Well, Jen Turner, the owner of Gemini Branding, is on our podcast today and we are so excited to have her. So for all of the marketing agency owners out there, I actually found Jen through an Instagram ad that she was running years ago and I resonated so much with her visuals and copy that I reached out to her for some help before Dot & Company was even born. So crazy story. All these years later, she is now our copywriter, designer, and we work with her to ensure that our copy is resonating with our audience. So if you have ever been on our website or reviewed some of our copy, Jen is the one to thank. So we have asked Jen to come on and fill you in on how you can write copy and visuals that align with your audience using website templates that she's made and also really just touch on the story of how she's built this amazing branding studio that is a one woman show and she does it all and Jen does such a great job at this so she's going to fill you in on how she went from working in an agency to actually starting her own branding studio and we're so excited to get into it Jen is an absolute gem and uh, Gemini branding is the perfect match to writing copy and visuals that resonate with your audience so let's get into it Welcome to the Happy Clients Podcast, brought to you by Dot and Company. Whether you're a virtual assistant, an agency owner, or a client-facing account manager, we all deal with clients. Lucky for you, client management is what we do best. Now, let's dig in, chat cam life, and have some fun along the way. Cheers to Happy Clients. So we're happy to have you here. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, ladies, for inviting me. Yeah. And Jen, for everyone listening, Jen was our copywriter designer since day one. So pre even, I don't even, the name wasn't even Dot and Company when we met Jen. And I think the first time we met, I was like, I'm going to start this business and I don't even know what it's going to be called. And I don't (laughs) even know what we're talking about. Um, but can you help me write some copy? And you were like, yeah, I have sure. a really awesome copy. Of course. <laughs> yeah. It turned uh, out amazing. And for the record, uh, the copy on our website has converted a lot of customers and mm-hmm. we get a lot of compliments on mm-hmm. people coming to our website and saying, I know exactly what you do because awesome. I've read your copy and it's amazing. And Music I- to my ears. That's yes. the, the best. It's like- and from a client side, even of course you guys having a history and then me coming into it all, I really feel like the tone and like you get us and like that sort of dot vibe is there without maybe even, you know, meeting in person yeah. really. So. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's surprising how quickly you can kind of, you know, pick up a voice just by talking with someone. So mm-hmm. I feel like Taylor, you and I probably only had the one meeting before we actually started any copywriting, but it gives you such a really good sense of who somebody is and how they come across, mm-hmm. how they need their business to come across. And then of course I inject a little bit of myself into that process as well. So <laughs> yeah. well, it's amazing. And we're so happy to have you here on our podcast. Thank and you. for all of our listeners, mostly agency owners or client account managers, uh, we want to hear all about Jen and Gemini branding and what you do. Absolutely. Yeah. So Gemini is a branding studio. Uh, I primarily serve female entrepreneurs. Um, And really, I came from an agency background myself, advertising agency. We primarily did uh, brand and web design. And I just found that in today's day and age, all of the focus is on visuals and visuals are really exciting. They're really beautiful. They're engaging. They're the thing that kind of compels us, draws us in but so often voice is forgotten. So within my local community, we have a number of really reputable big agencies and we were the only one that was doing in-house copywriting. And it just totally up-leveled our game, especially on the website front, but having a copywriter that can help with naming a brand before you actually design the brand, uh, write the copy before you actually start designing the website. That's a massive one. So many of us just start designing without even thinking about what we're saying or how we're saying it. So I, yeah, I, I come from an agency background. I honestly thought it was my dream job when I got started. I was coming from like startup culture, which was very chaotic, but very exciting. And so I still had that element 
of the fast-paced work environment, lots of hustle. It was really exciting. I loved the environment of just being able to make a decision and then you start running with it. I first, first got started in government. So it's like a very far cry from kind of yes. the slow cogs of the machine turning. So I really loved the pace, but I just didn't love the environment. There was a lot of drama, office drama and politics. And I really felt like there's a way to kind of you know, honor the hustle, have fun, have the fast paced environment, but without the kind of toxicity that can sometimes come with it. So that was really what led me to starting my own thing. And so when I did, I mean, that's why Gemini is called what she is, is because if you don't know your astrology, Gemini <laughs> is the sign of the twins. And so just like there's two sides to every Gemini, there's two sides to branding, which are copywriting and design. So really nice bringing those two together, really marrying them, um, and just reminding people that you can't have one without the other, uh, and taking an approach that really prioritizes copy and then lets visuals flow from there and serve to really support and reinforce what it is that we're actually saying. Love that. And I love that too. Thank I will you. echo, <laughs> like, everything that we do is, well, that we do with you is very much so branding and copy and it all just comes mm -hmm. together and mm -hmm. gives the client such a great experience without you know like you can write super beautiful emails but if they look terrible who's going to want to read them or vice versa exactly well and that's the thing right they're absolutely both essential and the way I look at it is visuals are really the thing that draws in I don't know if you guys have had this experience like scrolling Instagram for example mm. where obviously Familiar. the visual is going to be the thing that yeah <laughs> you know that one Katie <laughs> endless scrolling I actually put a time limit on mine every day for 15 Same. minutes so Taylor. Same. and it's like do you is the first no thing you do just click like ignore for the rest of the day? I'm like, yeah. as soon as I get the notification, I'm like, no, I'm done. Like, like, just 15 <laughs> more minutes. That's all I need. <laughs> yeah. I just bypass that altogether now. So yeah, I mean, you, you see a photo on Instagram, it compels you, it draws you in, you want to read the caption, but have you ever had the experience where you read the caption and it's like, there's really nothing yeah. of value here. Mm -hmm. There's nothing um, that's contributing to my experience of this image and of this brand. And so that's really where I think kind of visuals fail us these days is just giving no thought to what we're actually saying and the intention mm -hmm. behind them. Yeah, so. I love that. So you're working with a whole bunch of people. You have all these great clients. Tell us about who they are. What sort of, what's your niche? What are people kind of coming to you with? Absolutely. So again, primarily I work with female entrepreneurs and part of the intention behind that was really in starting my own studio, wanting to find a way to honor both these kind of like masculine and feminine energies and allow there to be hard work and hustle, but also a more nurturing environment and mm -hmm. having more balance and white space in your life. And I think that um, a lot of women and those who identify as so uh, really want the same thing in their businesses. They don't want to be working evenings and weekends unless it's on their terms and mm -hmm. really want to find that balance. Um, a lot of women, of course, uh, are also moms and struggle with the, you know, starting up a business and feeling like it has to look a certain way while also being a parent and managing family life as well. So I love working with female entrepreneurs because I think that we all kind of get it and there's like a sisterhood but of course work with all kinds of businesses, lots of gents as well. And <laughs> everything, I mean, creative realm is really what I do best. So a lot of photographers, videographers, interior designers, architects, but have also worked with, um, you know, nutritionists, business coaches, uh, all kinds of businesses really. And I feel like as a Gemini, it, it keeps me from getting bored, which is amazing. <laughs> and I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here, Jen, but do you have like a standout sort of client or like a standout piece that you did and you kind of like step back and you're like, wow, that one was really good. Man. So from agency days, I would say anything in tourism and hospitality was always a favorite. So I was really fortunate. I got to travel to the Caribbean and work on a private mm -hmm. island resort for a project there. Um, got to travel to Houston for a Tanzanian um, safari outfit. They um, operated their head offices out of, um, uh, sorry, Boston. Um, and But yeah, have traveled Boston, Houston, Caribbean, working for all these uh, travel and tourism um, players, as well as 
uh, local food and beverage is one of my favorite to work on yeah, um, cool. because who doesn't want to eat and drink yeah. <laughs> their way through yeah. a writing project. I'm into it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so I love doing uh, anything in kind of hospitality and then love, love, love working in the kind of wellness industry. So uh, fitness, nutritionists, uh, it's a passion of mine, something I really value. Cool. So love working with awesome. uh, women who are just getting started up in holistic nutrition and, and just finished with a Pilates master and all mm -hmm. kinds of fun stuff. I want to ask about the new service that you're providing, the startup sprint. Yeah. I've never seen such a thing. Um, and every time I see you post about it, I'm intrigued of what, what that looks like and why oh, you good. do it. Yeah. <laughs> tell me, tell me. Good. Mission accomplished. Yeah. So, I mean, and you know this by virtue of working together, but my business has been, of course, evolving over the last few years. And with that, I've started to rethink how I'm offering services. And the startup sprint, as well as what I'm calling gem days, which are really just a day rate, mm -hmm. really evolved from... Uh, you know, chatting with a prospective client and then finding out that what I was offering just wasn't in their budget. So it was a very kind of take it or leave it approach for a long time where it was like, okay, this is my package offering. Um, if it works, awesome. If it doesn't, that's a bummer. Um, and so what I started to consider was how can I essentially meet them where they're at within their budget, but also honor all of the time it takes to put together something like a full brand suite or a website design. So the startup sprint specifically is three to four days where the client gets to choose which services that they need the most. So generally it's brand design, website copy, and website design over the course of three days. So it's very intense. It's full eight hour days devoted to one client yeah. and very stripped back. So whereas you might invest in a full brand suite and get things like uh, social media graphics, uh, secondary logos, sub marks, um, you know, letterhead, business cards, uh, brand guidelines, you know, all of these deliverables within a startup sprint, we're really stripping it back to, you need a logo to get started. You, you don't necessarily need all the other, right? Hmm. So we'll get you a logo. We'll get you one page of website copy and we'll get you a one page website design. So in three days, you can effectively get up and running with the support of a professional. So you can count on your voice actually being exactly what it needs to be, your messaging actually communicating what it needs to. It takes all of the kind of questions out of the process but it also makes it affordable. So mm -hmm. because it's three days as opposed to eight to 12 weeks, um, it, it yeah makes it a lot more cost effective for the client and just essentially offers another service solution um, for people at different budgets. I love that. Oh, I'm assuming these people come like pretty bare boned, right? Are exactly. they, do you have like, I guess a structure, like should they have Shopify? Should they have Squarespace? Or like, do you have sort of, um, I guess- regulations? Yeah. So, I mean, generally speaking, when these people approach me, they either are totally unfamiliar with platforms and don't know what to use and are happy to uh, kind of go with my recommendations. The flip side of that is that I only work in certain platforms. So uh, because I primarily work with service-based entrepreneurs, Shopify isn't part of kind of my right. zone of genius. So for a long time, I was working in Squarespace, but found that it was very um, limiting in terms of what you're able to create. Um, it's very much based on kind of content blocks, as you guys are familiar with. Uh, so I've been transitioning over to Show It, which is a designer's dream um, for a client. Oh. If they're do doing their own website, if they're DIYing, Squarespace is perfect. Mm -hmm. But for a designer, Show It opens up so many more possibilities. So that's generally what I recommend. And then on a small, smaller scale, smaller timeline like that, we'll start with a template and customize the template. Mm. So that way, and it's templates that I've designed. So they're still original Gemini creations, but yeah. So mm. help helps to kind of guide them and take a lot of the guesswork out of it for them. Those templates sound awesome actually in gem days are, that's a great concept. Good job. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. I love a gem day. It's day. yeah, that's, yeah, that's what we do exclusively now for you guys. And it's just, I find it so much more beneficial both on the client side and on my side of things. Cause essentially what we're doing is stripping out a lot of the um, administrative side and the back and forth communication and just making it more productive and efficient. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, next question. So a lot of small business owners, getting started is a big hurdle because, you know, writing a website, building a website, creating it, writing the copy that's going to resonate with our audience is really tricky. And I know before we started Dot & Company, you helped to me to actually write copy that would resonate with our audience. And we have stuck with very similar copy to what you created in the beginning. And I'm so happy that I had that and it's absolutely changed our business. But what would you say for a small business owner who's looking to get started, how can they kind of use your expertise to build a website that is going to convert for their audience? I think um, for anybody who's just getting started, I haven't kind of unveiled them yet on uh, in a launch or anything, but I'm really hoping that it's going to make a difference within kind of the website template world. There are so many gorgeous options, like anytime mm-hmm. you're getting started with a new business and that you can go with, but nobody's really prioritizing copy within those templates. It's one of those things where you buy a template, there's so many gorgeous ones for Squarespace and show it, but then you're left to your own devices with copy. Yeah. So I've been working on a collection of templates to launch that are going to integrate copy into the template equation to Ooh. help guide people through the storytelling of what they need to be writing where on an about page or a home page or a services page. So I'm super excited about that. That's cool. So yeah. how will people use it? So if I'm Dot & Company doing client management and I download a template, how will I navigate that on my side? Absolutely. So essentially the template itself is set up with sample copy in each page to guide you through what it actually looks like. And then you're given a companion document to workshop your own copy, but you can always reference back the template and see how a professional copywriter, i.e. me, has written the copy for a, you know, faux client. So um, you'll be able to look at, for example, the hero in your homepage and have actual direction for, well, what the hell do you put in the hero of a homepage? Mm -hmm. Like, what am I supposed to communicate there? You'll have actual direction for that. And then, um, prompts to help workshop that for yourself. And then you can always reference back to the template to see, well, this is what Jen wrote and what she would do for example, a business coach and be able to kind of use that as an example and a guideline for writing your own copy. Cool. That's yeah. cool. I would say that's it. going to be so helpful actually, because I actually, I like to write copy, but it can actually just take so much time when it's totally. not like the, the, uh, initial sort of go-to part of your brain that you're using. Right. So absolutely something yeah, to have like a reference, nature. people will know what they're doing. They know their business, but like to have that reference to kind of bring out the best is really absolutely. awesome. Like so helpful for sure. Yeah. And I think we've all had the experience of like sitting down at your keyboard and just like the blinking cursor on a blank word doc is just so intimidating, right? It's like, I don't even know where to start or what I'm supposed to say. And you might have ideas, but it's difficult to know how to kind of focus them all in and actually create something good with those ideas, Mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. that people actually want to read. So this will be, you know, less about the uh, kind of how-to of sales copy and more just like a structure to actually writing copy and what to say in certain areas. Mm -hmm. But I will say like, you know, templates aside, one of the most common mistakes I see in website copy is making it about us instead of the person who's reading it. So I feel like we've worked on that a lot in the different pieces that we've worked together. It's always about the user, right? It's always about the person who's reading it. So if somebody's listening and they've got their website set up, they've got their their copy in place and they just want to DIY and figure out a way to elevate it for themselves, that's a really good place to start is getting in the minds of the people who are reading it, understanding the problem they're experiencing how they feel about it, and then starting Mm -hmm. to tweak your copy from there. So none of this like, hey, we're Dot & Co. and we're this, this, and this. It's like, I see you and I know what you're going through. I know the hustle of agency life and how hard it is to keep up with everything. It totally shifts the experience of reading copy. And it's the thing that makes you want to read more instead Mm -hmm. of just giving up. Mm -hmm. Yes, 100%. So I naturally obviously want to touch on clients as well. Mm -hmm. So Jen, being a one-man show at Gemini and obviously managing a whole slew of different clients and projects and probably doing everything in between from invoicing to sales and Mm -hmm. admin, how do you find managing clients when you're also the creator of your work? Mm, Interesting question. I kind of feel 
like they really go hand in hand. So I can't really create mm -hmm. unless I know my clients intimately and have a really good sense of what they value. So on a more kind of practical level, managing clients, I mean, certainly the kind of administration side isn't my favorite. So I've contracted out help. Like I have a, a full-time bookkeeper that takes care of all of my bookkeeping. Cause that was like by far from day one, I was like, I need to get rid of this. This <laughs> is not my favorite piece. I am such a Gemini. Like I have different sides to me, different facets and there's the creative side, but there's also an analytical side. So I don't actually dislike doing a lot of the administrative stuff. Cause I know that if I do it, it's going to be done right. And it's <laughs> going to be done well. Um, hopefully very few errors and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I think it's just like when you're a solopreneur, it's just part of it, right? It's finding the balance and being really aware of how much time you're investing on the administrative side or project management, client management versus the creative side. So um, I think it's uh, in the e-myth, he talks about the three different kind of facets of being a business owner. You have the technician, which is the person that does all of the creative. So that would be writing and design for me. You have the manager who's doing all of the, of course, management and administration, and then the visionary. And so for me, it's kind of uh, constantly evaluating where I'm spending the most time and is that where I want to be spending the most time. So I really love the technician aspect and I love the visionary aspect. I would like to do a bit less on the management side. And so that's when I start to look at, do I want to hire out a VA or do I want to hire a bookkeeper or this or that just to kind of make sure, keep myself in check and make sure that I'm allotting my time the way that I, I really want to be. Nice. I traditionally came from a more traditional marketing background and worked with a lot of very creative people and copywriters and designers. And my role has always been the middle person of mm. the, either the client account manager or the project manager. And a big part of my role is taking clients' feedback mm -hmm. and massaging it to make sure it makes sense for the creative, doesn't mm -hmm. offend them. Mm -hmm. um, and is Which actually, you're amazing at, by the way. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and is actionable in a way mm -hmm. that kind of makes sense. So sure. I'm always curious when creative people mm -hmm. um, have to take it all and have yeah. to speak to the clients of their feedback and make sure you're not taking it personally because 99% yeah. of the time it's not meant to yeah. offend anyone, but people do take offense and totally. to make sure that doesn't affect your energy and your workflow. So I, I'm always curious of like how, how that feels from your side. Absolutely. I think... Uh more frustrating than that is not getting clear feedback. And so that's always like a, having to kind of make sure that you understand what the client is requesting and be able to really clarify and articulate. So that way you don't go away and do something and then find out that it wasn't the right thing. So sometimes you'll get clients who just say, yeah, it's not quite right. And it's like, okay, so, so what about it, right? Is it colors? Is it fonts? Is it, yeah. uh, you know, or if it's voice, it's like, well, it's not quite right. Being able to articulate what isn't right about it can be mm -hmm. really difficult for a client. Mm -hmm. Understandably so, right? Because if they're not a creative, it's like, yeah, I just, I know something isn't quite there, but I don't know how to articulate it. So as a creative, you have to have the communication skills to actually kind of draw that out of them and figure out what it is and be collaborative enough and open enough and to your point, Taylor, not take offense or take it personally to really be able to dig into, okay, well, what is it? And honestly, when that's the issue and it's a matter of clarification, you forget about taking anything personally because you just want to figure it out, right? Yeah. You just want to yeah. zero in together. But yeah, it's, it's a totally valid point. And I think there's definitely some creatives that not only are a bit more prone to taking it personally, but they just don't want to have anything to do with that side of things, mm -hmm. the client communication, the administration, they just want to be creative. And I'm definitely not one of those creatives. Like I really <laughs> enjoy the client experience and, and just those are the people I get to connect with in the day. Like if I don't have these interactions, it's literally just me at my desk. So I really value that time. I enjoy meetings. I streamline them so I don't have too many. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I really enjoy that. So that's amazing. It's a and great skill to have, Jen. I'm not sure many people can yeah. share that with you. So thanks. 
Yeah, um, I was going to say most agencies are, or business owners are not like that. They don't yeah. want to do all the things and they get so overwhelmed with, you know, it's either the creative that they don't want to do or the admin or yeah, but to be able to do it all is the awesome. combo. Yeah. Totally. And it's, yeah, it's definitely, it's a work in progress kind of thing, like finding that balance of the levels that kind of make me happy. I definitely don't want to be doing all admin all the time, but it's a reality of owning your own business. And it, it was never my dream to own a really big agency. Like it was never a, or even a small agency. It was always, I love my independence and I love my freedom. And so contractors have always been kind of what I think is the best solution for my business structure. That's awesome. Yeah. Where do you see yourself going? Do you want to keep it like just you and and grow that way? Or what, what are your goals? Yeah, definitely. I could definitely see bringing on um, a VA, somebody to support with some of the more day-to-day tasks to free up more time for me to do the creative. But this year was a really big year pivoting my business model toward more of the startup sprints, the day rates, And so far it's been received so well. It seems to be what clients are really wanting. I think especially during the times that we're in, uh, COVID, you know, over a year in has been really wearing on people and their pocketbooks and what they're able to invest in right now. So honestly, I just want to move more in that direction, offer a few more kind of productized services as well as uh, the website templates just to offer a greater array. Um, And going into this year, my kind of goal was to work less to make more. Mm. So um, really feeling like I'm starting to figure that piece out and and really, you know, coming back to it full circle, being able to honor a way of work that, you know, there are really intense days that, um, you know, you work really hard, but then you also have white space and margin to do things that you want to do, both within the business and within your life in general. So it's fun to be able to kind of figure that out. And for me, I'm like, this is success. Like three, four years in, I'm like, okay, this is now I'm starting to feel like I'm hitting my stride and really shaping my business the way I want to. Love that. Love that. Thanks. So, so what, supportive. Yeah. Like we're all about it. All about that. Like, I know. It's like, she sorry. was speaking our, she was speaking our language for sure. Like that's, Aww. and I feel like that's even the message we must be seeping into your brain. <laughs> because that's like the message you're even like writing for us and we're trying to get out there too. So, so true. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, it's work on your terms, right? Mm-hmm. What does success mean to you? Like, is it like time freedom? Is it location freedom? Mm-hmm. Is it financial? Like what's like the main thing for you? Mm-hmm. Honestly, just the word freedom is, <laughs> is such a, like when I was still at agency and there was so much I valued about being in an agency, so much I loved about it the creative fulfillment, the variety of clients. Um, But freedom was really like the driving value behind wanting to start my own thing. Creative freedom, being free to choose the clients I work with and choosing clients that really align with my values. Time freedom, being able to work from wherever, locational freedom. So I think just freedom in general, like (laughs) from the time I graduated university, I always knew that I didn't want to work for someone else, but I didn't know what that looked like. Mm. And now I've kind of, I've had enough experience and gone down my career journey where I'm like, yeah, I know what it looks like. And I know that now I can do it with that freedom. So love that. Well, success. Check. Check. Freedom, Thanks, girls. Yeah, freedom. I'm playing, hey? I'm playing George. Who was it? George Michael in my, in my head. Love it. Yeah. No, it's a good life. And I mean, you girls have that too, right? Like the ability to work from home and to, you know, you're a team, mm-hmm. but you don't all have to be in the mm-hmm. same place. And yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even just def- working from a coffee shop or going oh for like gosh. a yes. walk at lunch. Like I hated oh, yeah. the restrictions of the nine to five. I like, think like oh. not getting up and showering and putting on, you know what I mean? That's like an hour out of your morning. Like I'd rather go down to yes. my jammies, have my coffee. Yeah. Scroll my feed. Totally. And I just think too, like, I don't know about you girls, but like, I'm not a morning person. I have tried and failed. I'm so the opposite. Are you dealer? Oh God. I remember reading. Yeah. In an Instagram yeah. post that you were like, this was like a year or two ago, but that you were like increasing, you know, you're getting up even earlier, like 15 minute increments. Yeah. Even yeah. Earlier. And I was like, I'm oh, definitely geez, makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. I I've tried. I honestly feel like my life would be perfect. If I could get up at like 5 45 every day, I'd be yeah. like, I could do everything I wanted before I started work. Yeah. Like, 
but I've tried and just not succeeded. And I'm like, the, it's okay. the traditional structure of, oh, an office environment does not allow for any flexibility. Yeah. Mm -mm. Well, amazing, Jen. Thank you for coming on. This was really great. And I mean, we work professionally together all the time, but it was good to connect kind of quote offline and totally get a little insight into what you're up to. So where can we, yeah, where can we find your templates and learn more about Gemini and all of the things Yes. So on Instagram, I'm Gemini Branding at Gemini Branding. And then on the interwebs, I am GeminiBranding.ca. So I'll be teasing all things website templates and up and coming goodies on Instagram. And then you'll be able to shop them on GeminiBranding.ca. Amazing. Thank you ladies for having me. It was so fun. So fun. We'll have you on again. Great. Sounds good. Cheers to happy clients.